Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, real ghost story. Today I want to tell you about the story of Shelley. Okay, a few years ago. <laughs> it's already, already happening in my house. Did you hear the bang? That was just outside my door just here. <laughs> Hello, who's there? It doesn't phase me because there's so much activity in this house all the time. Okay, let's go back to Shelley. A man rang me on a Sunday night. It was after dark when he rang. <clears throat> and he said, I need to see you immediately. And I said to him, what's going on? And he said, I don't know, but there's something around me. I can sense it. And I said, what do you mean you sense it? And he said, it's like someone standing right next to me, but I can't see them. So I said to him, where are you? And he said, I'm about an hour's drive away. And I was thinking, Sunday night, he won't be here until at least eight or nine o'clock at night. So my daughter's got to go to school early the next morning. So can you please come on Monday evening after work? He said, yes. So on Monday evening, it would have been about six o'clock. He pulled up outside my house, which is hello. You can see the window from the reflections coming in. And that's my front of my house out there. He pulled up outside my house and I saw two people in the car. Um, he got out of the drive, he was driving, and then I sort of got myself ready to open the door. So I missed how she actually got out of the car. But a young girl with long brown straight hair was walking beside him. They came to the front door. And as I opened the door, I said, oh, hi, are you, I'll just call him Ben, right? The guy's name's Ben. I said, come in, Ben. So he came in and just inside my door, I've got a three-seater chair. He came around and he sat in the three-seater chair and this girl stood behind him. So I'm looking at her, looking at him, thinking this is weird. He hasn't introduced her to me yet. And I said, I sat opposite him and I said, okay, Ben, what's going on? And he said, it's, it's so weird. What's happening? It's like someone is right here next to me. So I said, tell me when this started. So he told me a little story. So remember, he rang me originally on the Sunday night. On the Friday, he actually went over to Fraser Island. Fraser Island is off the Queensland coast here in Australia. And the only way to get there is by ferry. Now, he had gone over to Fraser Island for a weekend retreat, a spiritual retreat. So he left on Friday night. He got the ferry over Friday night. He stayed there Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday. And Sunday night, he got the ferry back. And he said that it was when he arrived back, when he got to his car in the car park, it was like someone was in the car. So as he was driving home, he couldn't see who was there, but it was like someone else was in the car going home with him. Then he said when he got home, pardon me, about an hour's drive away, he got out of his car, opened the door of his house, and it was like someone was right there at the front door. He could sense it, that there was somebody there. And he said he went inside and as he walked around inside the house to make sure that there was nobody there, he just felt that paranoia and that closing in feeling that you get when there's some energy right next to you. So he, he rang me quite scared on the Sunday night when he got home. So I said to him on the Friday, on the Sunday night, come on the Monday, right? So he continued his story. He said, when I woke up Monday morning to go to work, it was like someone else was in the house with me. I got ready. I made my lunch. I had my breakfast, had my shower, got in the car. And it was like someone else was in the car with me going to work. And then he went into his work situation where he works in a cubicle. He's got like this office cubicle 
He said it's a room, but there's two in there, so they've got like a wall separating them both. So they've both got their own window, etc. But he said we share this office space. And he said it was so weird. Like I knew where the other guy was on the other side of the petition, but where I was, it was like someone was sitting right next to me. He said even going to your place tonight, driving here tonight on that Monday night, he said, it's like someone is sitting in the car with me. And look, the whole time he's telling me this story, I'm looking at this girl who was standing beside, behind him. She was probably 17 years old. She had long hair, longer than mine, <coughs> and it was straight and it was dark brown. <coughs> Beautiful hair. And she wore clothes that you'd wear back in the 70s, okay? Okay. She had on the um, Chris, um, the sandals that I, I even remember them from the 70s, okay? You know, because um, my cousins who were older than me wore those same sort of cut, um, shoes. So I look at her and I said, what's your name? And she's looking around like this at my house. You know, while this guy's telling his stories. But when I spoke to her, she looked at me like this. And... I call that the eye pop because I've seen that with so many ghosts over the years. They get startled when someone can see them. It's like, oh, you can see me. And that's the, the pop. I call it the eye pop. So she's looking around and he's telling his story. And I said, what's your name? And she sort of looked at me and then she glanced back. and The eye pop of, oh my God, this woman can see me. And she said, Shelly. Now, the guy sitting there, he looked at me and he said, you know my name, it's Ben. I said, mate, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Shelley. And he's, he said, what, 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 oh my God, what? I said, mate, it's all right, it's all right. So I looked at Shelley and I said, do you want to stay? You're welcome to stay. Do you want to stay here and have a chat with me about what's going on? And she said, yes, please. Like that. So she was very polite at the beginning. So I looked back at this Ben guy and I said, Ben, you can leave now. But please know if this feeling that you've got this paranoia and like someone's standing right next to you, if that continues, please ring me and we'll do something about it. So that was a few years ago. That man never rang me back, and I know he would have, okay? But he was only in my house for about seven minutes. <laughs> he drove an hour to my house. He was here for seven minutes, and then he left. <laughs> Poor man. But at least Shelley stayed. Now, I'm going to go into what was said, but... If you do want the whole transcript, because I've written out a transcript of some of the stuff that we spoke about. And as she was talking to me, I did write some of this stuff down, okay, at the time. So I had my pen and paper. Yeah, I was like this and I was asking her questions. Shelly, do you know this? So I'd, I'd actually write down the question, Shelly, do you know this? And then as she said it, I'd say, okay. So I was writing down the answers, okay. So those those um, transcripts of our conversation is pretty accurate okay and they're all in my book which is called ghosts the psychology of why they stay um, that book is on lulu as a pdf and the and it's in the um, description below so if you um, click on the title of this video which is real ghost story the story of um, shelly right if you click on that the description will open up so then you can see the link where you can go buy my book because in there there's a lot of ghost stories that are all true that have all happened to me and there is photos also of real ghosts of real ghosts in there okay so let's get back to Shelley Shelley stayed here for three days very confused very frustrated very angry some points she got quite abusive with me and was swearing her little head off but I didn't put that in the book, obviously, just in case there are kids out there that want to watch, you know, under 18-year-olds that want to read it. Um, they call it juvenile 
um, paranormal fiction. <laughs> it's not fiction, okay, because this is real. Um, so Shelley stayed here for three days. And the reason why she stayed is because she wanted to go to the hospital. She has spent the last 40-odd years looking for someone to take her to the hospital. I'll tell you, during the three days that she was here, there was a lot of times I started bawling my eyes out because her story was so sad. She was going over to Fraser Island. Huh. She was driving on a Friday night. Huh, so was that guy that came here, right? Ben. He went over on the Friday night ferry too. So she was catching the fired Friday night ferry and they were running late. And she said that they were driving, it was dark. And Dave was driving the car. She was in the back seat because there was four people in the car. She was in the back seat behind Dave. And she told me all about how the car was swerving because it was raining. It was a dirt road. And then the car swerved and it rolled. Instantly, she was looking down at Dave who was on the ground by this point. She's told me all about his injuries, how where the blood was coming out of his head. She said, I can't understand why no one was looking at me. <laughs> oh, look, I do get upset by this, okay? It was so sad. She said the paramedics were there straight away, straight away. And I said to her, but they couldn't have been there straight away because back in the 70s, that road was a, a it, no one ever used it unless they were going out to the ferry. It was a very long, long road from nowhere to leading to nowhere. So it would have been hours for someone to find them, hours again to go off and ring someone because there was no mobile phones back in the 80s, um, 70s, I mean. Um, yeah, it would have been hours before the paramedics arrived. But she said from the time that the car rolled, instantly she was standing over Dave. So I go in, in my book, I talk about the psychology of why go stay here. And she had an amnesia. She could not remember what happened to her in that accident because obviously she died. She was such... A beautiful ghost her whole life ahead of her she was probably 10 years older than me so if she'd lived she would have been about 63 now you know you think about the life she would have had the jobs jobs children grandchildren marriages awards ceremonies celebrations all that she missed out because she died young in a car accident but she didn't talk about any of that she wasn't upset about what she missed out on she was upset about what happened with Dave her friend which is another psychological issue here she could not fathom her own welfare because she was more concerned about the welfare of Dave, who she saw with blood all over his head and injuries from this car accident. So I go into detail about why Shelley stays in my book. If you do want to copy the descriptions below, in the description you can find the link. It's on Lulu. Or if you want to email me, I can send you a copy with my PayPal link. Um... You can do it that way as well. So my email is below in the description as well. But ultimately, guys, Shelley did not know she was dead. Can you imagine the trauma she would have experienced if I had just blurted out, you're dead? Even after three days, when I started showing her the calendar, 
I showed her my mobile phone and I showed her other technology now that did not exist 40 years ago. She was absolutely, it wasn't shocked, it was disbelief. She could not believe that these items actually existed. She didn't believe me saying what they were because she was in such a psychotic state of disbelief and amnesia that ultimately the only truth that she had within her at that point was the fact that Dave was injured and some point Dave was still out there in some hospital and she needed to get there to see how he was. So when I said to her, Dave won't be at that hospital now, she could not believe it. I said, which hospital? We've got five major hospitals now in Brisbane. She did not believe me. When I told her about the year 2020 and 20, well, um, sorry, she came here in um, 2017. There was things back then that she just could not believe. She wouldn't even believe the calendar. She said, you made that. <laughs> and she was sitting at my dining room table. <clears throat> and I'll tell you how, you know, you've got your dining room table. <clears throat> and on the chair, she had her knees up like this under under a chin. And she had her arms wrapped around both chin, knees. And she was rocking like this. And she was looking down. And her head was... She was doing this. Now... I know body language as I studied it <laughs> and <clears throat> that's a very stressed person <clears throat> when we put our knees up under our chin in the fetal position and we hold our knees that's actually a survival mechanism when we're stressed the shakes and the disbelief that she was showing and then the swearing outbursts that she was doing you're not telling me the truth. You're effing lying. How dare you lie to me? Just take me to the hospital. I can understand why she's so confused. Oh gosh. So how did the end? How did how did the Shelley story end? I actually did come out and just say it bluntly to her and I said darling why do you think I see you she said I don't know you're nice <laughs> nobody else looks at me why are you looking at me for and then she'd flick her hair because it was really long straight hair and she'd flick her hair I don't know <laughs> gotta laugh at her because she had a great character you know so I said darling the reason why I see you it's because I'm a psychic medium and I see dead people. <laughs> I used the quote from that movie because she did not know that movie, right? So have a giggle there. <laughs> I said, darling, I see dead people. She's looking at me like... And she's trying to fathom it in her head. She could not get it. She couldn't get it. So I said, darling, that car accident... The reason why no one was paying attention to you is because they couldn't help you anymore. She's like, no, 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 I was fine. Dave was, Dave was the one injured. I said, darling, Dave was injured, yes. But they couldn't help you because you died. And that just sent her, <laughs> volcano came out of her, not literally, <laughs> but the emotion. You're lying to me. So I sat her down. I said, darling, sit down, relax. Yeah, calm down. I said, look, I'm going to tell you something. I've got a portal in my dining room. I've got a portal. A lot of people have seen it. I know where it is. It's huge. It's a big one in my dining room. Portals, I've got to do a video on portals because they're everywhere. What are they? What do they do? Well, how can you stop them and stuff? So I said to her, look, I've got a portal here. I'm going to open it. 
So I opened this portal up in my lounge in my dining room and she was looking into it like I said, Do you see that? She was like, What's that? I said, Darling, in there, that's where Dave is now. Your parents are in there. Your friends are in there. Even if they weren't. But generally, a lot of them would have been after 45 years, right? I said, darling, if you go in there, you can see them all again. And she's looking at it like... I said, darling, the other option you've got today is my front door. Because you can't stay here. So it's time to move on. You can go there, door A or door B. She was looking in that portal and I honestly thought she was going to go in there. But then she just stood up, flicked her like, don't tell me what to do. She walked through my dining room, walked through the living room. Then she walked through the front door without even opening it. And she walked through my front yard. So I run around after and I open the front door and the screen, thinking, well, it's so cool to be a ghost where you just walk through doors. <laughs> right? <laughs> I followed her out. She went out onto the gutter. She started walking down the street. And every house that she passed, she was looking in there. And then she'd look over the other side of the street. She was looking not only for someone who could see her, but someone who could take her to see how Dave was. She knows where I live. She was here in 2017 and she's never been back. I hope and pray that she found peace. I hope and pray that she found another medium who answered her questions and I hope and pray most of all about Dave I hope that he was okay because she cared so much about him he must have been a great person right I tried to find out who he was I've researched car accidents <laughs> from the 70s there's no records too old too long ago but it would be good to find it, just to verify it. So guys, if you do want to do a little quest, if you're a paranormal investigator, they're on the road to the Fraser Island Ferry, car accident in 1976. So, or was it 1978? Because I haven't got my book open. It's been a few years since I've told this story. So I know it was the late 70s. So if you do want to be a paranormal investigator, and her name was Michelle, Everyone called her Shelley. So um, if you do want to go and find it, please let me know so I can verify this story and I'll certainly give you the credit that you deserve for finding out this information. Hope you like the ghost story, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.